Uh, all right. So in this next segment, uh, we will be talking about the Intellivision Miko. I ruined it. I ruined it. <laughs> well, it's not like it wasn't an easy guess. Yeah. Um. So, we do know that um, some of the people in television have been a, a quite bit vocal as of late. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys uh, are familiar with a man by the name of Guido Henkel. Uh, you guys ever hear of him? Yeah, I've heard that name tossed around a little bit. Guido I Mussolini? Say, I, don't, I don't know that name. Uh, well, Guido Henkel uh, works for the Intellivision company. He is, uh, I think, a programmer. No, let me look up. I will look up what he is. Uh, got him right now. He is a principal software engineer at Intellivision. He is a award-winning game developer, producer, writer, sound designer, composer, ebook guru, and jack of all trades. Sounds like a, a, a really put together guy, someone who's really secure in what he does. You know, he doesn't need to fluff himself up. He doesn't need to uh, you know build himself up to be any any bigger than he is. You know. Just tells it like it is. So obviously that's the reason why uh, Tommy likes him. Because you know, birds of a feather and all that. But uh Mr. Guido Henkel has been quite prolifically tweeting the last couple of days. Uh, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to take a look at some of his tweets. Uh, hold on. Let me see here. Uh, we will we'll get to the heart of the issue. Uh, oh, should be real fun. Yeah. Uh, it looks like I'm going to have to go to a... Uh, you know, sign out because unfortunately, someone in this Twitter thread here has me blocked. Uh, stop blocking me on Twitter, people. Uh, make my life easier. Where, oh, where does this thread start, man? Right. Well, let me just pull up. Are you ready? I'm going to pull up chat here. I think this is uh, the one right here. All right, as you can see, uh, this is Mr. Thomas uh, Tellerico here. <clears throat> uh, this is his Twitter. He released his a letter from in television regarding Emiko. Thank you for reading. Um, this was the um, statement of facts that we went over yesterday. So we're gonna start here. Uh, Mr. John Scar says, uh, "What the hell is wrong with people? I seriously do not get it. Shame on Ars Technica for publishing this article in the first place without verifying information." Uh, as we went over yesterday. Uh, Sam is blocked uh, by both Intellivision and Tommy on, on Twitter. Uh, it is not necessary for him to actually reach out to the company. And third, uh, his article is not actually an article so much as a roundup and wrap-up of previous articles by other individuals uh, in which none of the claims made were ever challenged by Intellivision. Uh, this particular individual, John Scar here, uh, if you're not familiar with him, he has a Google Stadia tattoo on his arm because uh, he's in love with Google Stadia and how well that uh, system is done. He also writes for the Best Buy Canada blog uh, in which he tells us how great the Intellivision is. So uh, just a little background on, on some of the players. We're going to scroll down here. Uh, this is Aaron Basig. Um, he says, seems that ours Technica, I can tell, and television's response has some very questionable verbiage, though. This is where Guido jumps in. He says, so because you disagree with word choice in the correction, that makes the original article accurate in your mind, 
even though it is in inaccurate through and through. What is wrong with people? Uh, get a little hostile. A little hostile. Uh, so Aaron says, no, I disagree with Intellivision's word choice specifically because the Ars Technica article was correct. Now, he has two replies, so we're going to go ahead and uh, jump into the tweet because I believe Guido replied to him twice in two different uh, – no, no, DVD fever is in there. Um, many people. So many lovely, lovely – look at all these damn replies. We're going to go through his DVD fever. Uh, he, he just says uh, Guido was – what was incorrect about the Ars Technica article? That might be the best place for you to start. Uh, Aaron agrees. He says, indeed, I looked at over the entire article and cannot find a factual error. Uh, he said, glad they didn't say Tommy created the oof sound in Roblox because that's a factual error. Uh, we do know that uh, Joey Curis, Curas, uh, he's the one who actually created the uh, – Oof sound. To help Tommy, Kiris is spelled C E I R A S S. No. This particular Kiris is spelled <laughs> A U R E S. I'm just trying to help. Um, so somebody in the chat here is, is asking uh, who is this Aaron? Uh, well, this particular Aaron uh, is a Individual called Aaron Basig. Uh, he is the host of the Hungry Trilobite podcast, uh, gathering together fans of sci fi, fantasy, comics, and gaming, and embracing hashtag positivity and hashtag creativity always. Uh, they do have a channel here on YouTube. Uh, he reads many people. Uh, so he's not, not quite a nobody. <clears throat> yeah, he's some okay. sort of he reviews and other things too. Uh, I believe he writes uh, freelance. So uh, Guido replied to Aaron. He says, because you, of all people, would know, as a proper armchair expert, that is. Again, what is wrong with people? Uh, Aaron so says, quick I do with know. the insults. Yeah, Aaron says, I do know. And television screw-ups are well documented. Don't fault the people for paying attention. For some for some reason, and television loves to do that. Uh Guido has three replies. We gotta we gotta open this up. Uh, Guido says, "Look, it's Mister Perfect talking, who's never made a mistake in his life. Let me add you to my Rolodex. Your earth-shattering, all-knowing, universal expertise may come in handy someday." Ooh, Guido's getting a little wow. hot. Wow, that escalated quickly. They get a little hot. They run a little hot. Some people have personality problems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so Aaron says people do make mistakes. If they are corporations, it tends to be a bad move to rail against publications pointing out those mistakes. Uh, Guido says no one's railing. We're merely correcting unfactual, accurate statements. If they had checked their facts before publication, it would not have been necessary. It's as simple as that. Mic drop. Uh, Guido thinks he's mic dropping. So before we get to the rest of the replies, we get. You know, uh, to some other people that replied to Guido. Uh, one of those people was me. I said, quick question, why was the developer portal updated in 2021 if it was outdated? Uh, Aaron replied, that's such a good question. Never got a reply from Guido. Uh, he, he decided he didn't want to re reply to that. Uh, this gentleman here, Kira Raskuro, said the easiest way to shut people up would be to release the console or just manage to do something without tripping over your own feet. But you guys seem incapable of that. So I guess spending your time lashing out at and drawing attention to mild criticism also works. Good point, Mr. Uh, Kiaruskuru. Going back up here. Uh, just... Mr. Guido's mic drop moment. Uh, so Chris Mitchell uh, replied to the mic drop moment. He said, in television statement, Shark Shark and Missile Command are finished. Missile Command deep dive. That bottom left corner is for our testing. Those won't be in the final version. Fourth, re-upload of battle tanks due to use of unauthorized assets from other tank games. Crickets. Uh, Guido replies, not sure what you clearly, clearly, you do not understand the software development process. Even if a game is finished, this is still being tested, if only for regression testing. 
and fixed as needed. That's why it's called software as opposed to hardware. Uh, you believe in any of this bullshit? Uh, no, uh, the, the term for the, the term for this week has been mental gymnastics. There's been a lot of people doing mental, uh, um, flips and, and, and spins and, and all kinds of stuff this week. And it astounds me when this happens because it's as if nobody's watching these people as they make their flips and spins and, and, and jumps with the ribbon I don't know what to say here other than that. Well, well, to me, it always seems like they think that in their head, they're, they're like, yeah, I got that guy. Look at that, my great fucking Twitter response. <laughs> I own him. Yeah. And in reality, everyone's like, you have oh to God, say that. that. You have to say that in a New York accent. I mean, it's yeah, just, it, it, you're not a bunch of nobodies that are going unnoticed. I mean, these things are going like, Clearly, if you're getting defensive enough, something's wrong. And something's wrong within your group of people that you work with, coworkers. You know, it, maybe that's the reason why Tommy's had a hard time with this whole thing it, it is mainly because he has a lot of like-minded people working with him that are, are maybe um, not egging him on, but supporting him in his decisions to lash out at people because this isn't the first time. I mean, it's been multiple people and it, mm -hmm. it's just a, it's just a, like a business model that doesn't make sense to me. I mean, this is why you see big companies. They don't, they say what's needed and that's it. They don't have, you know, I mean, if, if, if I had a company or I was, you know, I was CEO or, or whatever. Right. And I had people working for me. I think the, best rule of thumb is you know the customer's always right even though you know that term is kind of it, 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 people don't understand that term that the customer's always right no the customer's not always right but you treat them as if they're right so that you have them to return and feed the business i don't think that they understand the damage that they do um i could now no i could be wrong i mean clearly the you know we talked about the marketing yesterday and how they probably won't have money to do it you know a great marketing campaign but if i w w owned in television i would tr be trying to make amends with anybody and everybody i i wouldn't want any um haters or outsiders you know i'd i'd want it to feel all inclusive i mean you want every person to buy an amico at the end of the day am i am i wrong on that or no that's what's so that's what's so fascinating about the the whole story and why we keep talking about it is because it is it's it's the way not to run a company 101 things like this exactly like it would make sense that we, we wouldn't want people like that jumping in the tweets with people and getting that just brings negative light to your company but they don't seem to get that and I, I mean, I, 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 I totally understand there's a, there's a time and a place to be defensive, but it almost seems like this happens just way too much. Yeah. You got to let things go. Like, I mean, there was no reason to respond to that. Right. If you're getting doxxed, that's one thing. To, you'll have people rally behind you. If, if, if obviously you're on the defensive and, and you've actually been wrong and people didn't have, like, a reason to come at you, and you know, it just it just seems so out of place, and and they're out of touch with this whole thing. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're always on their back foot, and uh, this is unnecessary uh, antagonism. Oh, did we is, lose you? In television, the bio, people are watching, people are paying attention. What's that, Gary? Oh, I we lost you, you there for a little bit. You, yeah, you were kind of cutting in and out. Uh, I got a train passing by. What I was saying is uh, people know who Guido is. Uh, he's got intelligence in the bio. He's being very antagonistic towards potential customers. Uh, him not responding would be way more better than him just getting into a Twitter slap fight. There's no reason for this. Uh, anybody who's on the internet long enough, anybody who's in any sort of public position, you know, even us, uh, we know people are going to say shit and we just ignore it because if we, if we feed the trolls, they will just keep coming back from and 
and I'll tell you what, it's not that he had to even, you didn't have to totally ignore it, but I think he could have taken the high road and said, look, you know, everybody's entitled to your, their opinions. We're, we're, we're trying to, you know, make our, put our best foot forward and, and make strides to releasing this. We hope to have you, you know, we hope to have you as a customer and maybe, you know, try out the Amico when it finally is released. And that's really all that needs to be said. It doesn't have to become like a bickering match between two guys, especially somebody who's probably doesn't really have a name for himself. I just, I don't understand the fighting with people that are essentially nobodies. You you know what I mean? It, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I disagree with you, Gary. Why? Uh, this was not a, the original tweet thread did not start with Guido. It was an Intellivision tweet thread that he jumped into. He saw people saying things about Intellivision and decided, yep, that's a fight I want to get in. I want to stick my nose in there. I know he works at the company, but every time that your company is being attacked on Twitter, you don't need to involve yourself. I agree. Just really thin-skinned, you know? And it gets better, folks. We're not even at the good part of the conversation. Oh, really? Oh, yes. So uh, Chris Mitchell says, uh, Tommy himself has called the deep dive games works in progress, so why make it a point in the rebuttal to claim they are complete? Is it common for a game like Battle Tanks to use, quote-unquote, placeholder media from other tank games for two years of development? Seems Intellivision evades that topic. Uh, yes, Rito they says, do. That's actually how software development works in the real world. You never actually complete a project. You only stop working on it at some point. Hence, patches and updates. Work in progress is a common expression that covers anything that hasn't been published. Is this guy uh, talking to Todd Howard? Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Einstein. Uh, well, well, Tommy, you managed to bring the biggest ass on the show. <laughs> yeah. But we're no, not done no, yet. No. Now, every as we all know, the biggest ass on the, this show thus far has been uh, Kim Kardashian. Uh, yeah, no, it was, was Amber big, Rose. Oh, yeah, that's true. All right, so oh, sorry, Aaron sorry, Bossing, go on. Uh, he replied, he says, the, their facts were accurate. If you have a specific example of where you disagree, it would be helpful. Uh, Guido says, shall we go in circle like that? Their article was inaccurate and we released a statement pointing out the inaccuracies. End of story, end of conversation. So, Going by this comment from Guido, he says they released a statement pointing out the inaccuracies. That means everything else that was not pointed out in their statement should be considered accurate according to Guido, right? Yes, exactly. According to that language, yes. Uh, Aaron goes on to say, that's not how this works. Ours can back up their assertions. You can't just say they are inaccurate without backing up your own words. And television has no credibility. You need facts or you have nothing. Uh, says, oh, gold troll somewhere else. That is how oh. that works. Oh! We're down to troll now? Uh, but Sam Mekovich makes his appearance. Oh, hello. <laughs> running in. He, he got the money in the bank. He's cashing in the money in the bank. He's running down the stuff. Hi, Greedo. Hello? Can you confirm oh, that television has versions of either Breakout or Night Stalker that have been updated since 2019 to be compatible with the final Miko hardware spec. We've yet to see anything beyond apparent PC builds and would love more info on that front. Thanks. Guido says, confirming the progress or commenting on games is not my department. So That's I'm what he just I can't did. Make any public statements to have any such effect regarding any game. But let me say this. Just because the public doesn't get to see these things does not mean they do not progress uh, so you've gotten into a slap fight on Twitter, and now when asked a direct question, you say, hey, I, I can't answer questions. Guys, what are you yeah. asking me for? I and cannot make any public statements. His <laughs> response became, but he was his response became so it. professional. Yeah. Honest aid. It went from mean, troll. It went from troll to, I cannot comment on this at this time, sir. Uh, honest Abe, good friend of the channel. Love me some Honest Abe on Twitter. He says, hey, if they have enough time to fight on Twitter and respond to everything, that must mean the console is being made right now to be released quarter one, 2022. Yeah. I, mean, I think they would be wasting this time arguing with people if they still had work to do to get it released. Uh, Guido says, what I do with my time is absolutely none of your business. 
Uh, yes, it is. Long, you know, it is now part of this here on Getty. <laughs> tell, tell that to the investors. Yeah, tell that. Mm. What's He's up? Just uh, triggered. Do you have time so to go make popcorn? You, you should. <laughs> Uh, you probably thought you were making these tweets. Uh, no one was going to see them. No one was going to point them out or highlight them. Uh, unfortunately for you, uh, it has been highlighted by us. And uh, we will get at least a thousand eyes uh, on this, Guido. I can guarantee the, you that. At least a the, real, the, the real Amico News Authority. The true Amico News Authority. <laughs> there you go. And once again, I yeah. would like to state, uh, calling it the Amico News Authority, I know what you're doing, DJC. You're trying to take the ANA acronym and there's only one a and a the amico no access we right. were that, here first that's right uh, I, didn't even catch that. I didn't even catch that tony yeah, yeah I, know. I didn't either i don't think so, he probably did either <laughs> it was just a happy coincidence yeah i don't know if he's intelligent enough to do notice that you sharp right, kid so you're real sharp replies Honest Abe replies, he says, so your response suggests that the console isn't currently being manufactured, nor coming out quarter one, 2022. Please tell me that it is being manufactured right now and will be released quarter one, 2022. Uh, he replied to himself, he says, I wouldn't talk about Tone because Tone makes you yours and many of the IE responses look bad. The Tone put out by many of the uh, IE is, we are super defensive because we are behind and can't show progress. We have pre-ordered a console and at this point you should be able to tell you to make a uh, Q1 2022. And since check the time we are currently in Q1 2022, I hope you are all going to deliver. I can't play cheap talk on my TV. Ooh. Oh, he responds more. So, oh, says, I wouldn't... Damn. Guido says, I won't tell you anything because there's no reason why I should, given your dismissive tone. I won't even tell you what time of day it is. Ooh. Uh, uh, tweet at him, uh, failure to launch. <laughs> so, you know, somebody, uh, okay. so we gotta go back. To I thought that was just an ad. Uh, that's yeah, that's good. funny. Yeah. So, Guido says, uh, okay, the confirming now in my department, Sam replied, I'd love for anyone who could answer to reply to this thread. It would require at least two parties in this thread to unblock me. Feel free to run that up the flagpole. This seems like a weird time for Amico to bail anything behind. Things the public don't doesn't get to see. Thanks. Uh, he got two replies to that, so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead, open that up. Uh, I do hate how the way. Oh works. no! Uh, Rito replied. Here we Sam, go. Sam, I understand, but please also understand that we have to be careful about info we share, and it has nothing to do with hiding information. Just common sense. Send us an email, though. We have a better chance of getting a good response that way than here on Twitter. <laughs> Sam says, careful about info we share. I would call today's list, as cited earlier in this thread, careful, Mr. Henkel. I will continue to request public responses to my questions, especially about the aforementioned games. Uh, Guido says, I would not call your article informed, uh, quote-unquote oh. informed. So by putting it in quotes, he's actually saying he's calling Inf it informed. Informed. No, no, because he said I would not call your article, quote unquote. Informed. Quote unquote informed. When you put right. something in quotes, you're implying that it's wrong. But if you're not calling it wrong, you're calling it correct. Yeah, it's a double Guido negative. His inner <laughs> voice has allowed him to speak the truth. He's actually calling. I would not wrong. call. I would not call your article informed. Meaning, yeah, it's very informed. So if you're not feeling, yeah, right, double negative. Uh, if you're not catching this, uh, replace the word informed with wrong. I would not call your article wrong because he would call it yeah. wrong. Guido, uh, you had a Freudian slip. Either that or you're just really bad at the English, English language. And, and within television, it could be either way. I mean, let's face it. Mm -hmm. So uh, he says, it was a bad faith, clickbait opinion full of inaccuracies, serving as a dog whistle to bring out dog the whistle. Dog, dog whistle. We are at the point where we're using terminology like dog whistle. Wow. 
Okay. And even sad. in light of the actual facts that we provided, you remain unapologetic, unprofessional. Uh, some asshole um, named Tony TGD uh, says, <laughs> isn't, it- <laughs> says, isn't it unprofessional to refuse to publicly answer questions asked of you? No response from Guido. Uh, no, no of response. course not. Mussolini. We need to start calling the guy Mussolini. It sounds better. No, we're not going to be calling Guido Mussolini. Mussolini. It rolls I, off the tongue. I, I just can't get over dog whistle to bring out the trolls. <laughs> is, that is not the kind of that is not the kind of rhetoric you want coming from a company that dealing with the people, dealing with consumers. Uh, dazed, wow. Dazed. I, I would. Uh, Bring it in just a little because what's going to come, what I'm going to reveal, you know, the big reveal, I always save the best for last. So trust me. Oh, boy. It's going to be good. Okay. Okay. But he says, uh, Mario Man jumps in. He says, good luck getting any of the Miko clowns. Confirm anything other than you got the information wrong. He's not wrong about that. Uh, Caution Dog, who jumps in, he says, the one that got me uh, blocked, by the way. I don't know who this person is, but for some reason he blocked me on Twitter. So caution, dog, if you're watching, unblock me. The fuck. Uh, it's not like we can trust much of anything that comes out of Intellivision anyway. This is the company that tried to dishonestly bend the definition of simple and unambiguous terms like physical media and exclusive games, and never once admitted they were wrong. Um, yeah, Aaron says they also repeatedly told customers they didn't know if they could make their ship dates when they had. <laughs> I'm listening. Sorry, I'm just... uh, Guido, jump back in. Says, talk well, about trust coming from a guy who's too afraid to tell the world his name and hides behind an anonymous alias instead. So proud of you, Guido. Guido, you, you got a problem with people using uh, <laughs> uh, not their picture as avatars? You got a problem with people being anonymous on the internet? Uh, why are there so many boomers in fucking Amico Land? Uh, these guys don't know how the internet works. They don't know how to protect themselves. You don't put because your face they want to. They want to say like, "Hey, man, we'll go. Let's go meet out back. Fight this out face to face." Ooh, like that's their, that's their are, logic. Are you, are you are you are you reading ahead? Are you reading ahead, days? <laughs> no, I swear I'm not. Oh, I swear to oh, God, geez. I'm not. Is that really where I, this is I'm, going? I'm hooked. I'm hooked. I want to see this. I'm just saying that's like how boom. That's how these boomers think. You know, it's like. Yeah, why would you put your real name and face out there like if you don't want to? You don't have to. Yeah, it's your choice. You know, it doesn't doesn't make so you be less cr- credible. <laughs> All right, so caution dog says, I'm glad you agree that in television lied multiple times since you chose to deflect rather than refute. Aaron says he hasn't figured out that that you and I have nothing to prove. We aren't the ones selling a console. We stand to gain nothing from Intellivision lies and shenanigans. This is true. Uh, so Guido says, I don't deflect. I just don't put up with bullshit and trolls. Wow. Yet, he's, yet this is his like 20th ta- twentieth message back and forth. With is, these this, guys. is this guy from Boston? I have no idea. <laughs> Sounds uh, like it, huh, Carl? They, I swear, if you look at all the people who are who are connected to the Amico and Tommy, the ones from Boston, uh, the Atari creep Tommy Tallarico, uh, someone else, someone has a draw, someone else. Just go grab another lager. You know, right, just Lots of people from Boston. There's a whole state. There's a whole like group of people called Bostonites. Uh, anyway. Uh, Caution Dog says, Guido, hey, Guido, an RFID chip that triggers a digital download isn't physical media, Guido. A port with some vague promises of added features isn't an exclusive game. Why does Tommy love Guido? Why does the CEO act like the stereotype of a used car salesman? Uh, Aaron Aaron replies, when Tommy said there was, quote, unquote, other encrypted stuff in the RFID card, was he lying or was he incompetent? Guido, Guido, with a little viewer. Mueller uh, thing, uh, and then of course Mario Man jumps in and says, "I believe it was the dude who said it best. New shit has come to light, man." <laughs> <laughs> so you notice, you notice a pattern here when Guido is backed into a corner to actually answer a question with no wiggle room. He just suddenly 
disappears from that portion of the thread. He's just gone. Just he's there just to fight. So we're gonna go back up here because I did I did go down. He says Mario Man says not sure how you manage that bike. Anything related to television? That's what buffoons there. Here's the big one. Here's the big comment. He says, I wonder if you would oh. dare say that to my face. Easy to hide behind an avatar and spew nothing but lies and hate out of pure jealousy. You should channel that energy into something useful and truthful. He's pulling ditto, yes, ditto, we would love ditto. To- wow. Yes, we would love to tell it to both of your faces. <laughs> Caution dog says... <laughs> Watching dog. We don't sound like a telephone tough guy. Yeah, he is. Are you guys hiring? I know a couple of guys who'd be a perfect fit for Intellivision. Their names are Peter Molyneux, Bobby (laughs) Costing, George (laughs) Detail, and Randy Pitchford. And of course, (laughs) you forgot Todd Howard. Of course, I didn't forget. I didn't write the tweet. Of course, some asshole named Tony TGD seven hours ago uh, said, "I would feel free to hop on my live stream tonight, Guido." Let's discuss the lies the company you work for has put out. And of course, no response it's from Guido. You might be scared. <laughs> I ain't scared. And we're still here live, Guido. If you want to jump Let's on in, it. let me know. Hit me up. You know Carl's ready to say it to your face. We'll turn our cameras oh, on. Hey. Yeah, and this is, the, this, is the, this is the this is the console tech technical engineer. He is. Um He's an Intellivision tough guy. Principal software engineer in Intellivision. Software. Okay. Jeez. Is that he's him familiar. or is that just a picture of somebody else? Like, Yeah, what does he look like? Him. If he's, What does his actual face look like? He kind of looks like... Jeffrey uh, Dahmer. Ken- no, he looks like Kenny G. Oh, <laughs> Jeff, like I said, Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer. So that is the saga. Side of Guido I mean, no matter what that side, was brilliant. You, no matter which side you sit on, it, it's that kind of unproductive uh, stuff that just keeps the everything going. I mean, no, nothing is coming from this this bickering, fighting, and uh, Twitter wars. And uh, they made a lot of good points that it's unproductive. And if you got a lot of time to sit around. And attack people that have th- their opinions on what's going on. I mean, clearly, this system is it. Well, it should be done, right? If if you if you have the time, but clearly, we we're still in, we're in 2022. Like they said, quarter one. Um, you know, they just put out that message that said w- that the uh, we're going to get news in the next 30 days or so, and. It, it just sounds to me like it, the or so is what's going to happen, right? We're going to get 30 days in. Nothing's going to be mentioned. We might get something by the end of February that, oh, yeah, uh, there, we're, 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 uh, we're going into production or, you know, we're, we'll, we'll be ramping up production by. And, and it has to be. We talked about this last night. It has to be by like June or July. You know, they have to have these founders editions out, uh, pre-orders or whatnot. Um, to even be viable for the for you know the, for the later part of this year for quarter four. I mean, if they want to go into uh, Christmas, they better well have uh, a finished product and it better be shipping out because if they have nothing, then it, they're just they're they're dead. They're going to be dead to a lot of people, and I think a lot of people who are in, the last of the people who are hanging on to those pre orders are just going to. You know they're gonna get their money back. They're gonna be. They're tired of this. If, okay, if I were senior, if I were senior management at Intellivision, I would be sending out an uh, a memo to say blinders up to anything on social media, not yeah, to respond. That should have. Why I mean, waste your time? Like we're that. on. We're on. They're on. They're on uh, crunch time. You know, you need to be but, in there. You, it just don't even. That's like what like an like you know like sports uh, players or whatever. Like they're told don't engage like when they're when they're getting into the playoffs or the championship game you don't go and engage and on social media and see what people are talking about ignore all that and focus on the game it should have been like this a year ago though like there's no reason for this especially after the especially after the quote-unquote apology from tommy 
mm-hmm. you would have thought that things were going to go in a different direction from that point on. That's now, what's like, retro- so insane. That's what's so like, insane about this this Twitter rant. It's, it's I mean, way re- too late. Re- retro Bro did make a good point last night and said, you know, Tommy has been kind of more quiet, and I'll agree. He's, yeah. He's been more quiet, but for Tommy, that's like, I mean, still obviously saying a few things here and there, but it, you know, it's down from what it was a year ago or two years ago, but clearly you have to reel in all of your employees. Everybody who works for this company needs to just zip it, man. <laughs> like I've said for the last two years, just put your best foot forward get a product out there and let that product speak for itself. The problem is, is that they're fighting an uphill battle and it's a battle with people that aren't really, you know, going to change. Yeah. What's the point of it? Yeah. It's not going to change the game at the end of the day. I, at least I don't think so, but it's like, they see differently. It's as if this Guido guy is like, uh, Tommy's hired goon. Like he's going to be quiet. And not get involved, but then Guido goes out there and is like his pit bull, like you know, like getting into the fight. You know who the NFL equivalent is? Antonio Brown. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You don't know who Antonio Brown is? The guy that like quit in the quit in the middle of the game and stormed off the field. Oh my god, it was brilliant. (laughs) He starts tr- he starts trouble on social media. This guy is equivalent. Is the uh is the Intellivision equivalent to Antonio Brown. Let's just put it this way. This this was uh the, it's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's the team that won the Super Bowl last year with Tom Brady as their quarterback. I know you have to know who Tom Brady is. And this is like their this is like them coming back to try to uh win it again, you know, defend their title. And this dude just quits at the end of the season, literally over just nothing. Well, they they think that the guy. <laughs> I, I love you. As much as I love football, uh, there's breaking news. Breaking. Breaking news. Uh, now, we don't get political on this show. Uh, We're we are not very political. Or but would you think. Either. Huh? I said, or sports talk either. That's right. No, sports like... talk. Uh, no, no. Uh, I, I wanted to <clears throat> get this out before I forgot where I was going with it. Uh, but um, would you say that the typical customer base for the Amico was left wing or right wing? Oh, right wing. Right wing. Right wing big time. How about you, Gary? Still with us? He's, he's gone. We're going to assume Gary said right wing, too. I'm here. Yeah. Uh, would you say Amico fans are probably more right wing or left wing? Um, Amico fans or left wing? Uh, interesting. Wow. Uh, everyone else is saying right wing. Wow. <laughs> well, let, well here, it'll hear me out. I mean, it's the left that likes to cancel everything, right? I mean... They're, everybody's playing the cancel culture game now. It's like it's impossible to tell the part between left and right. <laughs> I mean, all- either way, politically, it, it, the problem is, is it shouldn't be this charged. All, all right, this so could be let, solved. Let me ask you gentlemen a, a question. I know it shouldn't be this charged, but I'm trying to keep it down. But uh, would you say that uh, the current political parties in the United States would consist of the Democrats and Republicans or the Democrats and the fascist? Uh, how would you uh, describe? Yeah, I'd say yeah, the the latter. So, no, no, no. Let, let me repeat that. Are the political parties called <clears throat> Democrats and Republicans, or well, yeah, are they called well, yeah, Democrats and fascists? We got the Democrats fascists. and Republicans. Fascist. But, yeah, I wouldn't but, say I wouldn't call half the country fascists. But I think, I uh, but I do think one side of the political <laughs> spectrum does see it that way as the latter. Yeah. 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 I agree. <clears throat> so, uh, so we're all in agreement here. If, if <clears throat> half of the country are Republicans, <clears throat> probably shouldn't insult them. If half the country's <clears throat> Democrats, right. we shouldn't insult them. You know. So, um, breaking news here. We're, we're gonna, 
go ahead and uh, look at this because I don't know if you know this, but uh, in Virginia, uh, the governor, uh, you know, they just had an election <clears throat> not too long ago. Mm -hmm. and the governor um, became a Republican. The governor is now a Republican. Yes. Or <clears throat> as uh, Riedel Henkel would let us know that in a fear about losing the Virginia governorship to the fascist fascist <coughs> party. I think it is easy to <clears throat> the Democrats and other parties. <clears throat> Too bad the news media really don't talk about this. <clears throat> so, uh, Mr. Guido would like you to know that you are a Republican. <clears throat> you are indeed a fascist. So he's a so he's a lefty then. Wow. <clears throat> Which the fascist a, party that do we really are we really about to get we, yeah i don't want to go i get real political now yeah. i'm not going to because this uh, is not that show see that's <laughs> that's see that's why i said what i said because it's that it's just how they're viewing that <clears throat> this side yeah of it. are you okay it is. Carl? Uh, some <clears throat> water i was drinking something and I can't stop coughing for some reason. So down, down the wrong pipe. Put yeah. your hands above your head. Um, so let me ask you this: uh, Would you consider NFTs to be a grift? Mm, potentially, yeah. Uh, if you do it scummy enough, like people that do, like maybe real ones, but I, people are just like what? Like it's like a dog with a pair of sunglasses on it or you know like little stupid new accessories like right. that so, stuff is grifting to me uh, all collectibles are grifting. <clears throat> okay so if your company was releasing nfts as part <clears throat> of your uh, ecosystem would you be inclined to say that anyone getting involved in the nft market is a grifter uh, on a new <clears throat> I mean, it, it it's hard to say. I, I, I think in general, I think the whole NFT thing is somewhat of a, gr a grift. It just seems like a new kind of fad that they're hoping that takes off and that everybody wants a little piece of something that really doesn't mean anything at the end of the day. To me, it's oh, yeah, silly. I agree. But what, what the question was, uh, if your company was going to include NFTs as part of their ecosystem, would you be inclined to call NFTs a grift and someone who's getting into the NFT market a grifter? I, not, not in every case. Okay, so, so would, would it look good for the company you work at to insult a former first lady? Obviously not. Well, gentlemen... For two points, not only does he call NFTs a grift, he insults a former first lady, Millennia Trump. Uh, as a CNN article says, Millennia Trump launches NFT platform in first public endeavor. Uh, he says grifters will always be grifters. So if this is wow. a grifter doing a grift, uh, then NFTs are grifts. Guido, the company that you work for, is releasing NFTs. And he says, gold diggers will always be gold diggers, right? At Melania yeah. Trump. He even added her. Uh, such respect I wonder, for the uh, first lady, firm, former. I wonder how lady. some of this, I wonder how some of this Amico right wing customer base would be interested to see tweets like this. It, it would be uh, very shocking. Uh, I would like uh, the, certain people that are, are very pro Amico, uh, but are also very. Uh, Right wing. How do they, they, you know, make this in their mind? How do they? What's the word I'm looking for? Can't even think right. How, how do they digest Second this information? Uh, but gentlemen, this is not the uh, the straw that broke the camel's back. This is not the worst tweet. Uh, and Victor Chaos has suckered in a. Uh, Gen X gamer, uh, NFTs are definitely a scandal. <laughs> they, they might be, but if my company was doing NFTs, I would not be saying anything publicly, at least about NFTs. I'd keep my fucking mouth shut. Yeah. Like, Hell yeah, NFTs are fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mike Garcia is right. Guido is the lead software working on NFT system for the Amico. 
but definitely my favorite Guido Henkel tweet. Uh, we should do a segment best Guido tweets uh, weekly or best yeah. television employee tweets of the week. But uh, here, here is my favorite Guido Henkel tweet from January 12th. Ready for this? It says, guys, if you would spend as much time and effort hating on MAGA maggots as you are hating on the Amico and Amico fans, the world would be a much better place. Well, Guido, oh. the irony is that many of the Amico fans are MAGA maggots. So yes. What do you want us to do here? You're confusing me, Guido. Do you want us to, to, to hate the people you hate, which happen to be your customers? Or you want yeah. us to leave your customers alone, which are the people that you let's hate? Do it. Let's do it. We, they should do a poll of their customers' political party affiliation and see what it is. I would say it's 90% Republican. Who's yeah. well, Hold on. What was that? I, I spilled some garbage and I was screwing around. What, what, what did you I would say that like the, 30 seconds. I would, I, I would just say that the people that are supporting Amico are 90% right wing Republican. And he's sitting literally shitting on that party right there, Mag. We got to remember like we got to remember that this is there they have what two two or three offices in California. California is a is a blue state. So That's true. That's true. Yes, um, uh, that that is true, but like Days says their customers, their main customers, their big supporters, the guys making the show videos, with the exception of probably Canadian Pete. Both Canadian Pete's, all three, all the fucking Pete's, all right, with the exception of the Pete's, uh, are probably right wing. Uh, and at least not support. even not not necessarily even the content creators, but just the people that are like taking all this garbage and just accepting it. Yeah, are there? There well, well, are. The, funny, the irony. The irony, like Blinded Braille reminds us, uh, the irony is a family-friendly console hearkening back to the good old days. Uh, it is often being referred to as the MAGA console. Many people make the joke that this is the Republican, the right-wing Christian yeah. family console. Uh, but apparently, remember the, the 80s. software engineer does not like those people that he's building a console for. Do you remember Ronald Reagan? I remember him. Reagan. That's what, that's what they're thinking. That's what they're. That's what they're thinking back to. You know, like that time. Like, do you remember Ronald Reagan and the peace of the '80s and how amazing it was sitting around playing the Intellivision? <laughs> I mean, this is just a. This is a really bad statement to come out of his mouth. It just whether you're whether you're on the the right or the left it doesn't matter. That's why I try not to get the politics involved into my gaming because I want it. I no, want it it's not exactly. That's the uh, whole exactly. point of playing That's, video games is to escape. Why would he bring this up? Like he he made this personal. Now he's made this political. It did not need to be. It didn't. Uh, Tommy Uimiko says nobody calls us the Republican Council. Tony, you're delusional. Uh, go to the <laughs> reset era, resetera, uh, the Amico thread. They've called this the Republican. The uh, MAGA console. I uh, think I know. have seen that, Tommy. I yeah, have. there's been there's been He's talks right. about it. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Ren of Heaven says Americans take politics super serious. No offense. Uh, where I'm from, we coming under the collective of law politicians are crooked and just have to screw you no matter who you vote. Yeah, I don't well, think it's serious. Well, there was a time, no. and there was a time that people didn't take it super serious, and that we didn't talk about it. But in the last six years, it's been nothing but politics because this, this right, country is going to hell. I'm going to provide you the simplest solution: instead of making America great again, let's make Skyrim great again. Yeah. <laughs> let's Carl, make the Elder Scrolls Masa. great again. Did you hear the acronym Masa? Yeah. Masa. No, uh, no, it's actually yes, make M A M G S A. I don't know. Make America Skyrim again. M S M S G A. Make Skyrim great again. M S G. That stuff's no good. M S G A. You know, I mean, this is just it's 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 gone past the point that there's no return you know they, there's no return from from where they're going it's, it's just i don't understand what that has to do with the amico or 
any of it. You're co why you would want to push away potential customers is beyond me. Whether those customers are total buffoons, whether they they believe in slavery, whether they're whether they're whether they're uh, racist bigots. I mean, you still want bigots to buy your product, don't you? Because at the end of the day, that's two hundred fifty for the company, regardless of his political alignment. That's what uh, that's what Mike that's what Michael Jordan never got into politics really because people would ask him about that and he says well Republicans buy shoes too don't they like selling right. them Jordans <laughs> I mean money's money yeah it just baffles me it's this is the road that they want to go down and then when they're called on it they don't they don't have an answer for it they don't want to play. Well, I bet you now that Tony has exposed this out for everyone to see, they're going to nip this in the bud because that's going to be – that's problematic because it, well, you can't have a representative of your company posting things like MAGA maggots. That's just not going to go over well. No, I mean, regardless of whether he's wrong or right, it's a bad look, and at the end of the day, you're pushing away potential customers. That's the bottom line. You know, a businessman right. – don't give a shit about anything but the numbers. And yeah. like you said earlier, there's no, there's no politics has no place in video games. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, well, why I get angry I'm when guys like Pat and talk about shit like that. It just doesn't need to be there. I'm going to disagree with Dave. Yeah, Dave. they're, they're. Uh, politics, okay, let's hear it, Tony. Politics do belong in video games. Uh, current American politics do not belong in video games. But video games should have politics, you know, kings, queens, whatever. It depends mm. on the game. Just don't. Like, yes, put exactly. Black Lives Matter into a game. Yes, you know, current, that current, that current, current year politics have no place in games because it. Well, takes like, you well, out of well, the, well, real. The I think real, real world politics, right? I think there are great yeah. games like Final Fantasy VII was highly political. You know that, that that's tactics. Final Fantasy Tactics has lots of politics. Right. And and that's fine. It's real world politics and it's bringing like real life personal, uh, you know, feelings and, and other people into it that just muddy the waters. And, and that's what they can't seem to understand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I know this is not exactly uh, what we cover here, but I did think uh, it was something we should highlight because, like I said, Guido is the. Uh, principal software engineer at Intellivision. He is a high up. He's an executive. He's not some guy sweeping floors. Yeah, he's not he a nobody. Fights with people, and uh, like you said, you know, the customer base is probably uh, leans Republican, uh, right wing. Um, he's insulting I mean, half of the country. I mean, Tony, if 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 you brought this up at your job and you and you started a fight, between, would you get fired for stuff like this? Well, if I started a fight, yeah, but if I brought it up, probably not. There's actually a political uh, variation of this example. Remember when Hillary uh, uh, called the insult to the Trump voters? Uh, she, Hillary called did. she called them Deplorable. the deplorables. Yeah. Uh, Ninja Kitty says, I thought the Amico fan base was 100% Canadian. What's all this political talk about? No, nope, <laughs> you're wrong. I just think, like I said, it is very funny to see these guys, to see Guido out here uh, insulting half of the country, whether you agree with them or not. <laughs> that, you know, uh, it's half the country, like you said, half the country spends money. Why like would 70, you alienate 70, any portion? Right, seventy-three mil, million voters, right, and that's not even uh, the, the children. That's not even that, the, but the kids then, under but then the, the cherry on top is that we've said that that is their customer base are prior mostly right wing. So it's just, it's a, it's funny. It's hilarious. I, I mean, I could argue and say that the, the their base is scattered all around. And, and that's yeah. the thing about gaming is that, you know, when you get into it, that's why politics is usually left out because it, it has no place and that people can come together and enjoy an experience and be left, right. It doesn't matter. Yeah, um, exactly. But, but when you but but when you divide them like this, it just doesn't look good for the company, and you're you're hurting potential customers. That's that's just the bottom line of the, I'm the entire thing. I'm going to disagree with Gary. Uh, I do think uh, uh, you know this particular console is aimed, like I said, at a 
uh, retro market. It's aimed at classic video games. Uh, they're, they're doing a lot of this, you know, uh, back in the old days, <clears throat> family. It, it has very strong Republican right-wing vibes to it. Whether you want to admit it or not, I'm right-wing, so it's not like I'm shitting on these people, you know. I understand. And you didn't, and you didn't vote for Trump. Uh, I don't vote. Just saying. So. Uh, he doesn't point. vote. Tony doesn't have an ID. <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> the point is, is, like I said, you are shitting on half your customer base, a potential customer base. You're, you're shitting right. on people that are supporting you as your customers. Uh, this has no place uh, in it. Uh, they probably should have. You know, had a policy. You would think at a professional company, they tell you outright, do not tweet about politics. Do not, you know, this is a, a topic you don't discuss on Twitter as you represent the company. Let me let me ask you this. Do you think that this is a way because in television already thinks that they have people who are uh, more Republican in the bag, like they got those diehards sold? And uh, is this like their attempt to try to reach out to Democrats no, to like try no. to lure in some of that? No, I think personally he just feels comfortable within his, uh, you know, affiliation with his side that he can, he, he feels like, in, in, especially in today's day and age, right? You see a lot of people on the left. I mean, it takes place on both sides. There's, there's no doubt about it. But I do think people on the left tend to feel more free in their expression that they can say things like this and not be um like punished canceled right, right. I, I think they they feel like they have a chip on their their shoulder to to go and say what's on their mind and they don't they don't understand um the potential you know problems with what what he's doing i you know it, it just it just baffles me that you know i might not agree with his politics but at the end of the day if he was creating a good product i mean i've said this i've said this uh, quite a few times about uh the play date and panic if you look at panic as a company they're they're based in in seattle washington they have basically a rainbow on their uh their profile icon or whatever I mean, Panic is pretty probably left leaning as a company. Their politics couldn't be more different than mine. But at the end of the day, they have a solid product. They have something I'm interested in, and they've done everything right to the consumer that they're selling to. Um, that I feel confident that me still going through with my purchase is the right move, regardless of politics or sides or any of that. Right. Yeah, I agree. And there's there's nothing wrong uh, with being political. There's nothing wrong with uh, having beliefs uh, one way or the other. Uh, I think when you start getting wrong, when you start attacking the other side, uh, when you start demonizing people, ostracizing people. Uh, also, well, there's, a time and a pl there's a time and a place for it. It's just not in a company like that. I mean, it just baffles me. Uh, uh, That's the real ironic. story okay. here. It's not the politics. It's just the fact that they're doing it again. It's just another bad look. Like how how many lessons do you have to learn before you just hello stop making mistakes? We can hear you, Carl. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> the ironic part is how Tommy calls people gaming communist, uh, implying that we are <laughs> evil left wingers to his right wing. So. Uh, it's kind of weird. Kind of weird. I thought it was kind of yeah. weird. Yeah. Is yeah, that was hilarious, dude. I'm glad I had no idea. I'm One glad day it was slowly Nintendo's revealed gonna get like that. And it man, he's gonna find a horse on his pillow, a horse head on his pillow. No, no horse heads, Carl. I mean, no I, I mean, what are we gonna get on the, the actual pro like when when the Amico, if the Amico ever ships, and on the back of the box, instead of video games, what you're gonna get is all the tweets and all the stupid things they've ever said listed on the back of their box. Like this is what we're gonna advertise. This is the like is that basically sum up this last two, three years? Like instead of putting the video game pictures on the back of the box saying you could play the new Astro Smasher, you could play the new uh Finnegan Fox or or games to come. We're going to put all the bonehead things they've ever said on the back of the box. Turn that back of the box around when we put it on the shelves. And that'll be the first thing that the consumer sees. I mean, that could be, that would be the haters edition. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I mean, that's just what they're doing. They're killing their product. And, and we've, we've told them time and time again for the last year. Not only that, shut but up. the sad thing, the sad thing I've said it before, like, yes, oh, and television was care. not, and television was not my uh, they really brand don't. of choice when I was younger. It was Atari. That's just how it but is. They, they are tarnishing the Intellivision name. They've just, just crapped all over it. Right. right. They've right. taken Everything that from all involved. of us. The same way that the Coleco has been tarnished so bad. Like, this is just well, the Intellivision now they're into. They, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people that just don't even want to deal with this. It's, it's like, if this is the kind of community that's going to be uh, surround, surrounding the Amico at launch, what, like, there's a lot of people who will not even want to bother just because of that alone. You know, there's some people who can tolerate it and deal with it, but there's other people that just that that don't want to They're like there's there's no point right there's no point exactly. to get into uh, buy buy a buy a console that even if you're going to go on discord or you know granted there's no online you're going to go on discord and talk to guys or or, or discuss stuff do you really want to be talking to guys that think you're at the end of the day just a maggot ma maga maggot or wh whatever his words were i mean it's stuff like that that just pushes a lot of people away and that's in every different like they're pushing groups of people away every like month. It seems like they, they, someone says something here, someone says something there, they do something here. And it's just it, it, pushing potential customers away. And I don't see why you would want to do that, regardless of whether they align politically with you or not. How many, how many hours do you think it'll be before that tweet is deleted? I don't think it will be. Yeah, I, I don't think it will be either. I mean, it's there. In a day and age is what I don't understand is these people say this stuff and they don't realize, like, screen, like obviously it's not going anywhere. We have it right here, right? You know, they, it's people have screen captured it and people are talking. Some people might be talking Maybe about it. We're yeah, but any potentially. But, right. the, but think about it. The, the story of the Amico is such a small story. Uh, you know, like, there's most of the people in the world aren't interested in that. So anybody new well, that's coming in, that's, if they see, stumble that, upon it, if they stumble upon a tweet like that, that's just going to potentially keep scaring customers away for, but here's the thing ever the, and ever. It's it, it, right now. It's not, you know, it's not newsworthy, but what happens when the real marketing, if it ever does kick off and let's say millions of people are interested in it and they do start they digging that. deeper and they see t our videos and they see tweets like that and all the archived videos and all the stuff that's been around for three years. I mean, at some point, whether it's, whether your marketing hasn't started yet and the, and you already know, let's, you know, you, you have two sides, you have, uh, us quote unquote haters, and then you have the the quote unquote cultists on the other side. I mean, when the when the real marketing and the real consumers that they they keep speculating are going to come, you know, in the future, when they really do jump on board, they and they start looking up stuff, and this is all they get for you know. Oh, let me go and see what was going on two years it's ago. A, it's what, a shit it, show, right? You don't want that as your image. Yeah, they're called fascists. <laughs> uh, uh, Carl cracks. I mean, up. what do you think, Tony? Um, I think it is a entire shit show. I think the uh, <laughs> inmates are running the asylum, and it's it's quite embarrassing. I mean, but can't we that, all just I mean, get along and enjoy video games? We can all get along. Uh, Panda Sub wants you to know that Amico After Dark starts in five minutes. Uh, it's good to know, Panda. Well, Thank you for letting us know. I'm glad we'll you stream could be snipe, y'all. We'll stream snipe and critique. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll hop on. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure John knows I'm hopping on later. Uh, G10 says, "Who do, who do in who do you think in television is targeting with their retro inspired? It's not retro inspired. Remember, you're wrong. So I'm calling it that." It's neo retro inspired. I mean, it, it it's always been from the very from day one since this was announced. It was always the demographic of guys. Now, I wouldn't even see say guys my age because I've been pretty clear that I've uh, I'm amongst a, a very small group of guys who had an Intellivision at my age at 35. Um, growing up, that was just uh, just a weird occurrence that you know we had one. And we had, you know, probably one that was bought from Big Lots on, on clearance and all the games were bought clearance out. And I enjoyed <laughs> it. But 
I, I I'll, I'll stand firm and say it was always directed towards guys, you know, in their forties and fifties. I mean, this is what it was for. And when they, they decided to throw stuff like Sesame street on there and, and just dumb stuff instead of really going the route of, um, uh, the, the retro reimagined, but like Tony said, it could have been more of a retro remakes with better features. And that could have grasped, you know, that could have really fed to everybody, right? You have games that are kind of fresh and new and, and good ideas while still hitting that, you know, age range of maybe 30 to 50 year old guys who, who grew up with this thing. So it, it, it just boggles my mind that the way that they, decided to kind of dump all of that and say, you know, we, we have some of that stuff. We have some of the retro reimagined, but we're going to throw games that have been on, you know, flash devices or, um, you know, flash websites, flash games. There's a um... decided to, to, uh, have games that were incomplete and just all of the decisions that they decided to make have just, they're just head scratchers. So there's a point someone, there's a point someone made on Max's show once it's called the Amico because that's the only friend you'll ever have. <laughs> it could, could, be, could be true. <laughs> that could be a hilarious marketing strategy. Like, go for losers that have no friends. <laughs> <laughs> the Amico, it's the only friend you'll ever have. <laughs> that's, that's a good slogan. I don't know. I think it was, uh, it was Lung or someone like that, but I, I forget who it was. Need a friend? Uh, Here's the Amico. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Introducing I'm looking the for Amico. The thing here. Uh, I wanted to show you guys something, but I'm not finding it. And it's pissing me off. Piss me off here. Oh, Tony. Why, well, we can do the top three while you're looking for that. Well, no, better no, to be pissed off than pissed on. We're not. We're True. not. Uh, not stopping this train, baby. Uh, okay. As, as the title says, there are no breaks. We just keep going forward. And uh, we'll skip what I was looking for to highlight this. Uh, this comes from the Intelligence uh, very, very private Facebook group. Don't tell them uh, that we found it. Don't let them know. <gasps> uh, we got someone replying to John's post. It says, Arse. Technica lost value in the video games industry more than 10 years back. Anyone who Ooh. follows these idiots for advice is far, far down the rabbit hole of stupidity. Mm. Uh, this comment here says, well done, ass Technica used to poo-poo on so many <laughs> related and gaming-related products years ago and completely without merit. That is clearly why I never listened to their mudslinging. It's half-baked journalism. Not even. Uh, you see, you got three ass likes Technica. here. And you got one like there uh, for 20 points in control of the board. Would anybody like to guess who contributed one like to each of those posts? Uh, Relic Tommy. Gamer. Tommy. Tommy. DJC. Relic uh, Gamer. I've heard Relic Gamer. I've heard DJC. But the correct answer was Days Gaming with Tommy Tellerico. Yes, Tommy, who has nothing better to do. Than to upvote or put a little thumbs up on uh, people shitting on Ars Technica because that is a great look when the CEO is out there uh, thumbing up people causing trouble. Uh, see, Tommy, you might not have kept your mouth shut. Uh, you might be sliding in the background, but this is just as bad. You think people aren't going to notice that you're out there uh, giving them the thumbs up when they shit on uh, Ars Technica? You're stirring the pot. You're, you're getting people riled up, getting them all antsy in the pansy, <laughs> making their liver quiver, their knees shake, the back crack. But uh, we're here. We're here to spotlight. We're here to let you know when a CEO does bad behavior. Because we are just that petty, aren't we, Carl? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, yeah, you know, whatever you said is true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that level of dedication. Uh, yeah. Oh, Carl, I love you. All right. So um, I couldn't find what I was looking for, unfortunately. But we're still going to talk about it. You're going to have to take my word for it because I love you. All right. I, we let's go. 
All right. So back in, uh, I believe it was November of 2020. Man, it's been so long with this Amico saga. It's November of 2020. I'm taking you back. Way back. And I got a fucking train. <sighs> the mothership is coming to Duck <laughs> Tony. <laughs> dee -doo, dee -doo. So in November of 2020, uh, Tommy was saying how he was going to be in the December issue of AARP magazine. Uh, he did an interview with him. He was going to talk all about uh, the Amico. Uh, December rolled around, and surprise, surprise, there was no Tommy Tellerico, Television Amico article or interview in the December issue. Now, when this was pointed out, Tommy, he said that he told AARP to pull the article. Okay? Pull the article because mm -hmm. they wanted to wait till they were closer to launch uh, to let the article out so people would be, you know, because they're always with this like one month before launch, they got to do all the marketing. Uh, well, they're probably thinking that most of these old people won't remember that they saw the <laughs> ad unless it's immediately out there. <laughs> That's a good. Uh, that's a good point. Okay. So remember this. Uh, remember, uh, in November, he basically said that he was a hundred percent sure they were going to be in the December issue. It was a lock. It was in there. And then by December, it wasn't in there. He told them. He said he called them up. You know, pull the article. Mm -hmm. Now, Tommy also said they were going to be in Scouts Life magazine okay and uh that actually uh manifested there was a scout's life uh i won't say article it was more like a blurb in which they uh mentioned the intellivision i think they got the date for release wrong and of course people pointed this out they said tommy how did you let scout's life put the wrong release date in there, right? You know, it's not coming out. And you know, Mr. Tellerico, Mr. Thomas Tellerico, he, he always has an answer. He always has something to say. Uh, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to look at Tommy's response. So the, uh, I, I, do, I got a question. So what's next in an interview? With, uh, is he going to do an interview with uh, Jared Fogle? Ooh. From, from jail, from Subway, sure. <laughs> the Subway guy. <laughs> yeah, Subway guy. <laughs> He's in jail right now. He'd have to do yeah. it from. Uh, was oh, wait, it Rikers? This wasn't in Scott's life. Hold on, uh, let, let me retract. That, guy, that was a serious fall from grace, Jared Fogel. <laughs> uh, I have yeah, misinformation. Sorry, uh, this was a different article uh, that said that they were going to be released. Uh, in April, but obviously they had already announced that that date was not uh, happening. I believe this was in the retro <laughs> German article or something. Where the uh, date was wrong. Uh, Tommy mentioned Scout Life as an upcoming article in, in his reply about why the date was wrong. We're going to take a look at this because it's very important. Uh, but first, a, a, a comment from Ninja Kitty. No. Jared no, Fogel no, presents. No. No, I said no. <laughs> People, wait, wait, wait. stop it. I don't want the show to get canceled. The network has been on my head. It's been breathing down my throat. Uh, All right, so what does it say? <laughs> Go read it, Carl. Go read it. Jared Fogel presents... It shows, it shows. It shows him in the. Uh, it shows him bending over in a shower <laughs> in the in the prison shower, looking back. His butt, his, his, butt, his, his, his butt is the literal cornhole. Holding a holding a foot long sandwich in a bean bag. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We got it. Out of uh, Jesus. We're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. It's, it's, we got it out of our system. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> Sorry. What does Thomas T say? Okay, so Thomas T is talking about this article mm. in a German magazine. 
he said. Uh, the German magazine had said that April was the release date. Obviously, they had already missed this. Uh, so he says, I'm surprised the real, uh, quote unquote, he's talking about me, by the way, the real the journalist didn't speak up about this. As any real journalist knows, magazines have very long lead times. This was clearly written in January when we were still hoping to get out in April. Can't wait for everyone to see the big feature we're doing in Scouts Life magazine this fall. Uh, never manifested, by the way. Uh, millions of families is going to be great. Uh, why is this important? Uh, well, this is important because uh, he's acknowledging that magazines have long lead times, which means that a magazine is not pulling an interview. They're not pulling it in December for a December issue. Uh, those magazines were printed up. <clears throat> they were ready to go. So if he said in November that he had an interview, an AARP magazine, um, he lied 100%. Factual. No. Lie. But because he I, can't lie. But he I'm can't lie. He the just real can't. journalists. He saw oh, he's uh, mad because on, uh, on Reddit, uh, I put on my uh, Reddit flare a uh, real journalist. Oh, wow. <laughs> he was actually upset. Tommy Tellerico came uh, to Reddit. He, I don't know if people know this story, but he came to the good Amico Reddit. And uh, I put on his flare. Uh, uh, what the hell's his name? Come on. What the hell's his cousin's name? Oh, Steve oh, Tyler. Tyler. Steven Steven Tyler. Tyler. Yeah, that's what I put on his flares. He said Tommy Tellerico and I put Steven Tyler's cousin. And he got so ass blasted that he said <laughs> that unless we changed it, he was leaving the good Reddit. He wasn't coming back to answer questions. He's taking his ball and going home. Is that a threat or a promise? <laughs> uh, it was a promise. Uh, so again, just to reiterate, just to bring everybody up to speed. Uh, Tommy uh, acknowledges that there are long lead times for magazines. Magazines go into printing well be before uh, their shipping, well before their due date. Uh, you got you got to plan everything out. A magazine isn't just like you write some shit out and it fucking goes into a magazine. No, they got to plot out all the space, make sure everything fits, where the ads are going to go, what pages are going to do what. Uh, this is a process that takes a while. And then they got to get approval. They gotta get final approval. Uh, so if he was gonna be in the December issue, his interview would have had it been taking place at least in September, maybe earlier, just to get it written up, approved, put in the magazine, get that page approved, get the rest of the magazine approved, get it printed up, get them sent to distributors, get it sent to the people that are that are from the distribu distribution <sighs> center to the local distribution center because. It's got to be on everybody's doorstep December 1st for the AARP magazine. So there's no way when, when this is all printed up and inside the warehouses, he's like, hey, you know, just rip out page 37 because I don't want the interview in there. Just fucking go in, go through all of them, just rip the fucking pages out. So, gentlemen, I'm pretty sure Tommy lied. I know, it, I know it's heartbreaking. I know that... Uh, you don't want to believe it, Carl. But I think he lied. What are you name dropping, bro? Who are you name yeah. dropping? What are you name dropping like that, bro? What? What are you talking about? Spicy Carl? take. All right, so what's next? <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm confused by what, what you're doing, Carl. <laughs> you watching bro stream. Stop watching bro stream. Carl's doing scratch off. Uh, no, that, that wasn't me. I was wiping stickers off. Wiping the. I was using the old goo gone. I thought I had my mic muted. Well, gentlemen, uh, the Intelligent Amico portion of the podcast of the uh, stream of this show would not be complete if we did not play fair. And read the positive article written by Giant Bomb on the Amico. Ooh, let's see it. Oh, is there? A, well, hold on. Was there a new one? Is this the old it one? The new one. Oh, bold oh, prediction. really? Bold prediction: twenty twenty two will be the year of Amico. 
Is that uh, who's that? Jeff, Jeff Ger- Gershman or <sighs> the one that owned? Um, oh, this was uh, owned... edited by Big Socrates. <clears throat> Were they writing that while drunk? Uh, this is on the forum. It's not an article. It's not an official article. It's on the forum. The year of the amigo, huh? The year of the amigo. Let's hear it. So we're going to go through this uh, forum post, not not article. I was mistaken. I thought it was an article, but it's a forum post. It's a long one. It could be an article. It's ginormous. Oh, uh, big Socrates. Big there. Socrates. The bold prediction. That's one here. There you go. All right, bold prediction. 2022 will be the year of Amico. Uh, says, what does it mean to be the year of something? It doesn't mean that the thing, it doesn't mean that thing is the highest selling. Within the video game sphere, 2020 was the year of PlayStation 5, even though the Nintendo Switch sold more mm. units. Because the PlayStation 5 captured the attention of the gaming world and became an object of desire among frenzied masses, battled bots and scalpers more vicious than any fungus, zombies, or Norse gods that try to get one. It doesn't agree mean with that. that that thing is the most popular. 2021 was arguably the year of Xbox and Game Pass, even though the PlayStation and Nintendo brands remain stronger. But Xbox gained a relative position in the market and people's mind share, garnering positive attention for strong game releases and additions to their services and forced Sony to react by planning a similar service for their own system. This guy's a good writer. I should hire him. Now reach out to me, Big Socrates. Uh, instead, I'd argue that to be the year of something, that thing has to be the has to have the best year relative to its starting position and make the most positive progress in the market and public opinion compared to where it began. See where he's going, gentlemen? No, oh, I do. Says with that definition in mind, it, it seems all but certain that 2022 will be the year of the Amico. Uh, the Amico starts the year with several powerful advantages. The first is that very few people have heard of it. It's easy to make impressive relative progress when you're starting from ground zero. On a relative basis, selling a single Amico system would increase its market share more as a percentage than Sony or Microsoft could by selling millions of machines into a market that already contains tens of millions of PlayStations and Xboxes. Amico also has the advantage of having a dreadful reputation that would be easy to improve. Among the small but dedicated group that already knows that the Amico exists, just having a mediocre performance would create a massive improvement in the machine's perception. Since outlets like Ars Technica has already predicting its failure and the collapse of Intellivision, the company that plans to release it. Uh, so they, they're making a good point. If the company is so low, so low that it's below the Earth's crust in public opinion, just getting back to ground oh, yeah, level I'll watch you. will seem good. Yeah, they can only go up, right? Yeah, they can only go up. Uh, I mean, if that's your standards, that your standards are so low that it could, that could be the year <laughs> of the Amico, then sure. <laughs> yeah, yes, Ninja so. Kitty, it is only forum post, not an article. Uh, I did correct that. Uh, uh, what's that? Uh, EFX says, uh, when the Amico <clears throat> first came out, it was supposed to ship with that collection of games they sold to Evercade, right? Uh, no, it was supposed to come out with even more games. The Evercade collection only has, what, I think, 10? Probably, like, yeah, it sounds about right. Uh, every every single original and television game uh, was supposed to come out day one. He said, uh, quote-unquote, all the original and television games will be available on Amico day one. Boom. That was set on Electric Playground in front of Victor Lucas. Is old, yeah, what, what did it again? Read that read that again. I'm sorry. I got I had to do something. What was what did you say was day one? Uh, I wasn't reading anything. I was quoting Tommy who said all the original and television games would be available on the Amico day one. Boom. Oh yeah. When was that said? 2019, uh, in front of Victor Lucas on the uh, Electric Playground Network YouTube channel. And don't ask me how I know everything. I am just that good. But let's continue with this post because there is a lot more to cover here. 
Does it get it's better? Said, but it's more than just how easy <laughs> it would be to improve. What was that? I mean, if someone uh, else wants to read. No, Gary said, does it get better? I just laughed. Well, where I are you at? I'll read. Better. It's the Amico. I got it. Don't worry. Uh, it says, but it's more than just how easy it will be to improve its relative standing that makes Amico all but guaranteed to win the remaining 352 days in 2022. It's the product itself and the company behind it. The Amico is a true disruptor in the marketplace. Hmm. While its competitors are focused on cutting-edge graphics and the fool's errand of photorealism, Yumiko offers up the comfortable and pleasing aesthetics of the mid-2010s cell phone market, considered by someone, somewhere, probably, to be the pinnacle of gaming aesthetics. While other companies have foolishly wasted money on the fad of online gaming, Yumiko has the vision to offer only in-person gameplay, which is bold and disruptive in a pandemic-stricken world where many are afraid to interact with others. Is the Amico the product that will finally coax the population out of hiding to spread joy and saliva droplets with their loved ones? You can't prove it isn't. Mm. Uh, the Amico also disrupted console and controller design. While Xbox and Nintendo try for subtle, modern, angular look that blends into your living space, and the PlayStation 5 invokes visions of the future with its spacecraft like sweeps of black and white plastic. The Amico probably looks like a Fisher Price put bath for aliens. Complete with even more bright LEDs than we and the owners with a decade and a half ago, whenever it needed one of its frequent software updates. Uh, it does kind of look like a uh, Fisher Price foot bath for aliens. I, I agree. Yeah, I like that. With the uh, especially with the lights going, I can see an alien's foot feet just dipping it in there with the laser show going. <laughs> says, even the Amico's controller is a market disruptor, eschewing such pointless features as dual analog sticks and sleek ergonomic design to offer up something that looks like the result of an illicit affair between a garage door opener and a cell phone from 2007. <laughs> it doesn't even have face buttons, choosing instead to marry the much-loved pleasures of touchscreen action gaming to the smooth controls of its 64-direction sliding disc, previously seen on the original Intellivision. The 3DS, kind of, and nothing else ever, even though it's been around for 40 years. A true disruptor doesn't just make something new. They take something old that nobody liked and make it irresistible. Hmm. So, uh, are we seeing, uh, are we agreeing with this guy? Are we saying that the Amico is going to be good? The year of the Amico this year? Yeah, it's the year of the Amico. I mean, <laughs> sure. Let's see it. I need to right. see the proof. Uh, he goes on to say, Amico is also disrupting game design by zigging while the rest of the industry zags. As games become more expansive and demanding of players' times in hopes of creating long-term revenue streams, Miko is shrinking game design back down to the kinds of experiences that were provided in the four kilobyte ROMs of the 1970s. Dying Light 2 may take 500 hours to experience everything, but who has that kind of time? Wouldn't you rather play a game where you're bored and ready to move on after just a few minutes? In addition to encouraging people to get together by not having any online, Amico is encouraging people to put down games and go outside or pick up a book by offering only tedious, repetitive experiences. We all had before presented in an outdated graphical style that will have your jaw hitting the floor when you realize that, yes, this nice. is a game released in 2022, and it looks like that. We need a soundboard. My jaw is hitting the ground. Ew. If you've ever played an old cell phone game and said, I wish this cost 10 times as much and could be played on my TV, then congratulations, you want an Amico. <laughs> Miko will also keep greedy developers away from the system by charging 50% of the purchase price on their online storefront. This is not a system for game makers who are only in it to turn a profit. This is a system strictly for those who are in it for the love of game and a desire to support in television. Mm. Parents can feel safe buying Amico because unlike other systems, it has no physical games for little Timmy to beg for in the store. Tired of walking past the video game section in Walmart and having your child point and beg at the latest and greatest? 
that won't happen with Amico. Because all yeah, right. Happen. But isn't that where we had the games were shown that that the kids could buy? That we talked about that. He's literally making the comparison that we that we said the other night. Like the kids, what crying at the store at the checkout. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, just... that's okay. Uh, says that won't happen with Amico because all Amico games must be purchased online and even the physical products have to be validated and downloaded with an internet connection. And Timmy won't be excited by new releases in store because Amico conveniently bakes the store into the OS home screen, differentiating between games you own and those you don't own, yet only by fading the icon of your future purchases. Keep the game begging at home, in private, where it belongs with the power of Amico. <laughs> uh, that was great. Uh, it's not done yet. It's not open. Oh, there's more? <laughs> <laughs> Does it get better? Uh, yeah. The page ain't loading all the way. Hold on. Jesus Christ. I mean, is the, it really? You got a, is the hamster wheel internet? Is it really going to be the kids at the store crying for an Amico, or is it going to be like the uh, four-year-old? No, no, it's the it's gonna be no. It's gonna be the dad. It's gonna be the dads. It's gonna be the dads in the aisle crying for it for the kids to try to play. No, it. no, like, no, no. We don't no. want you that right. trash. Right. You're both right. Are wrong. You both are wrong. It's the kids crying because the kid, the parents are threatening to buy it for them if their grades don't get better. <laughs> 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 yes. No, yes. No, Dad. We want a switch. As a punishment. You better get you better get your crates up, or you're getting an amico. <laughs> your cousin's just got an amico. Don't make me get you one too. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna play games like cornhole. Why is my fucking shit frozen? Oh, right. well, those amico uh, interns are hurt at it again today. They already took blinded out. Yeah. Oh, they're um, hacking. I got the it. I fixed it. Are they hacking Geek Getaway? They're always hacking me. We're back. We're back. We got to go. They can't right. handle the truth. Right. It says, but Amico saves its greatest disruption not for the games or console design, but for capitalism itself. Many consoles famously sell it for as low a price as possible to expand their user base make their profit selling games. Amico instead acts like a true luxury brand, charging premium prices for bargain basement components and making his money up front with each console sale. Some console makers, especially Nintendo, have been accused of keeping low supply low in order to drive demand and make people snap up any systems on store shelves so they won't miss out. Amico takes that one step further by not, by not releasing any product at all, surely driving consumer desire to a fever pitch. People are paying double or triple MSRP for PS5 systems that are all but impossible to find in stores. But with Amico, even the scalpers don't have any, meaning the demand can build to a true fever pitch. Despite that, the Intellivision COO has announced that they are currently planning to formulate a plan to release the system. Only thing better than a plan is a plan plan to plan a plan. There are rumors that Intellivision might not release a console at all, ever. This would be a master stroke of capitalism, driving the man, demand absolutely through the roof. That d demand could then be turned into pure profit through various means such as Intellivision's innovative idea of making every game an NFT, helping destroy the planet and driving people back indoors to play Amico before they get bored in five minutes and decide that death by heat stroke is preferable to yet another round of charging. Uh, whether the Amico releases or not, and whether it sells its projected 1 to 2 million units by the end of the year, or only sells the 6,000 or so that have been pre-ordered, one thing's for sure. There's nowhere to go but up, or at least to the side. It'd be pretty hard to go down at this point. Even just CC yeah. operations would probably prevent them from being clowned on as much. Because of this limitless potential for growth and very low downside, 2022 is all but guaranteed to be the year of the Amico. Hold on to your butts, people. It's going to be a thrilling... Schoenfreude ride. Schoenfreude ride. Yeah. Q cornhole. <laughs> I'm not oh, sure. Goodness. I'm not sure 100, percent but I think that article that that forum post was dripping with sarcasm. Just sarcasm. yeah. 
That's, That's what I was thinking. Off of it. 